Hello, everybody, and good morning. Have you ever heard the phrase, the hurrieder, the hurrieder I go, the behinder I get? Uh, that's me, Terry Harden, Walt Disney's legendary Imagineer, uh, actor in Ghostbusters, performer in Ghostbusters, Men in Black, Dune, you name it. I've probably done it at some point in my career. Three Wikipedia pages, if you're wondering who the heck is this girl, simply Google Terry Harden. How are you today for Ask Me Anything? <laughs> oh, the energy is flying high today, isn't it? Oh my goodness. I thought I'd keep things a little bit light today because um, we need it. There's a lot of negativity out in the world and I just thought I'm not going to jump on the bandwagon and be rawr, rawr, scratch, scratch today. Although you may get it later on as you post your comments or your questions uh, here. I just thought I would share a couple of things on that thumbnail. And one of them is that one of the, the shows that I like very much is uh, Stranger Things. I kind of prefer the first two uh, seasons to the season that's happening now. I think the season is moving very slow. I will not spoil it for you. I will not spoil it for you. But especially now that you see that little figment picture, I saw an article with WDW Radio today, and uh, uh, I saw this picture. I gave them credit. Um, I did find the picture on other sources, but... I, I wanted them to have credit because that's where I actually saw it. Made it smaller because you didn't really need to see the room. I just wanted you to see that that classic figment because um, it's kind of cool to see him there. And many of you were, I've, I've told people that my next sculpture is going to be figment and everybody's like, what's that? And you go, what do you mean what's that? Um, but I'm dragon centric. So I know these dragons. So... I shouldn't assume that everybody knows who Figment is, but I kind of did. So I was surprised when a lot of people said, who's Figment? So um, Figment is this adorable little animated character that hangs around at Epcot. And although he's never had a show or an animated thing uh, on a movie about him, he is so popular that people can't breathe. I mean, the and he's, he, he hangs around in Epcot, which is my favorite park in uh, Florida in Walt Disney World. Uh, I love Epcot and I love Figment. And many of you may or may not know that I auditioned for the voice of Figment when he was established way back in the day, but uh, didn't get it. I lost to Billy Barty. Um, so, um, but I had a good time and I was in the finals. So it was, it was fun, but I love Figment. He's a dragon. So what's not to love? And uh, I'm going to be sculpting him. So it was really exciting to watch Stranger Things and see this little stuffed figment in this room. I was like, oh my gosh. So it just goes to show you that the most unlikely people love Disney, Disneyland, Walt Disney World, the Disney brand. I mean, if you're surprised that every time you turn around, someone goes crazy for Disney, um, you're going to be surprised a lot. Okay. Uh, it's just, um, it's just the way things are. I'm going to just do a quick check here and see if I have this one particular picture. It doesn't look like it's in there. So just give me a second. Cause I'm going to show you what I mean for unlikely Disney fans. Okay. Uh, I think, uh, uh, blah, 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 blah. She wrote something. I don't want to get distracted by that. I basically want to go in here and pull up this one particular picture that I think you guys will really like. I've mentioned to you that I've done the uh, 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 Chuck Jones Center for Creativity Red Dot Auction. Well, it's coming up. And um, yeah, just let me see if I can find the, the real picture. I know I shouldn't be doing this while talking to you. It's really, but I think you're really going to like it if I can find it. The question is, can I find it? If I can't find it, then I will do it another time. But I was really hoping that I could find it. But looks like perhaps not. Okay, so... Um, I will use another unlikely Disney fan example. 
which of course is Guillermo del Toro. Guillermo del Toro is a huge Disney fan. This is one of the reasons he wanted to direct some of the some of the things. But um, you know, again, Stranger Things, which is kind of like scary and creepy, and and then all of a sudden you see that lovely little figment there. So if you like Stranger Things um, on Netflix, then you're going to gonna want to run over there and then keep your eye out in the bedroom for uh, the little figment. It'll just give you that Disney woohoo, you know. So there you go. Also, you saw in a picture a very interesting shot of uh, me with a little afro. Yep, indeed, that's me. And uh, many of you sent me tons of pictures from Ghostbusters. Looks like a couple of sites on Facebook and Instagram decided to take some tiptoeing through the tulips of memories and share some behind the scenes shots. And I was in a lot of them, but I do not have my hair like this. It's the little uh, Afro shape. So, um, so you can ask me about Ghostbusters. You can ask me about Rocky Horror Picture Show, Renaissance Fair, uh, books, whatever. Um, Outrageous Pumpkins, I'm a judge on that. Um, uh, 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 is there a new one coming out? Don't know. But uh, uh, the nice thing about the Food Network is they always show the past ones. And so they show 2005, 2000. I was a judge, 2005, 2007, 2009, 2010, I think. And then 20, 2018. And I, anyway, there's plenty to watch. You know, like, uh, uh, what is it, Halloween Wars? They always show all the seasons of Halloween Wars during Halloween. And that's Discovery slash Food Network. So, so uh, you will see me because I was a judge on a ton. But will they air anything new? I cannot say. Okay. All right. Okay. So post your questions. Forgive me. It's breakfast time. Um, post your questions. Post your comments. We can talk about anything you want to talk about. And um, it's Ask Me Anything Day. I will tell you that uh, I am going to be holding a raffle. I am a member of the Ch the Disney OUAC Walkers. That's a team for Chalk Walk, C-H-O-C, Children's Hospital of Orange County. And we always usually, before the pandemic, walked through Disneyland and California Adventure. But after the pandemic, we weren't able to do that. <laughs> So virtually we walked and, um, this year it's, it's going to be kind of a different thing, but we are raising money for children's hospital of orange County. And I want to have a raffle here for you guys where you simply send me, uh, the money for a ticket. It's going to be five bucks for the ticket. And I'll throw it your 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 name in the bucket and uh, randomly pick someone, and I will then send that out to you. You will have to pay for shipping, but uh, uh, other than that, it's completely free to you. Okay, but that will help me raise money for chalk. So stay tuned. There'll be more on that later because I want to pull out something that's really really cool for you to win, and I'm not sure what that is yet. Okay. So uh, I will let you know. I'll keep you posted. But that's the the thing I, I was thinking about telling you about today. And then was there anything else I wanted to tell you about? The uh, Roly Crump chess set is coming along. Uh, slow but sure, but uh, each piece is a challenge. I'm almost done with the bishop. So I will show him at a later time. I'm almost done. I want to show Roly first. But uh, so there you go. There it is. So let's see what you have to say uh, before I do. I know you're so curious about my tribe. You always are. Here's my Patreon page, patreon.com slash Terry Harden. Terry's tribe is a place of like-minded people who come together and share their voice to support others. So if you are naturally a giver or you're someone who's uh, maybe a little, uh, you know, you're, you're someone out there who's, who's got a job that maybe you're not real thrilled with and you'd like to make a living doing something fun that you're passionate about. And you know how I feel, uh, an artist is someone who's passionate about what they do. So you may not be doing what you want to do, but you want to know how to cross over and do that. I know for a fact that I, uh, one of the tribe members, uh, cleaned and her dream was to, uh, uh, work at Disneyland 
And I said, speak it. And she's been speaking it. And guess what? She now works at Disneyland. Was it the tribe support that got her the job? I think it was the tribe support that continued to keep her confident as she kept shooting at that target until she hit. So uh, we're there to support that. We're there to support, you know, just about, we're, we're, we're just there to help each other. Okay. When you are down and in this world right now, there's a lot of people that are feeling down because of, of what's happening in the world. This is the perfect gathering. $5 a month is all it costs to be a member. Go here, check it out, see if you like it. Dip a toe in the water, stay for a month, see if you like it. If you don't like it, you can leave. We won't, you know, or we won't bad mouth you after you've left. No, that's not what we do. Um, but we have a really good time chatting and I speak more frankly because it's a, a private page. When you're on a public page, you want to watch what you say because, you know, and I don't always watch what I say, so just, you know, disclaimer, disclaimer, no catalytic converter on my mouth. But, uh, but I'm really super frank when, when we're in there, we do, uh, I do a broadcast before this one every Monday and Friday. And then we have a zoom call where we all get together, bring a coffee or bring dinner or whatever, depending on when it is and just have a chat. Really. We're just sharing. So, uh, so, uh, yeah, so it's, it's cool. It's cool. And I have treasure chest giveaways and, you know, fun stuff. So if you're interested, go here. All righty. <laughs> Commercial over. Back to you, my wonderful folks. Let's see who's in the house. Good morning, Bob Berdine. Oops, oops. Sorry, Joe. Happy Friday, Joe. I went to Joe. I went to Bob and then the other one. <laughs> Sorry about that, Joe. Uh, hi, David. How are you? Leo's in the house. Hello, Leo. What's up? What's up? Marianne Lewis. Good morning. Now, um, uh, there will be a gallery event happening later this year that I will be talking to you about to an appearance here in California where we're going to do a, a gallery appearance. So I will give you uh, all a shout out as soon as those things are ironed out and a date is sort of set. Um, you know, it's way in the future. So we're going to do the best we can. Right. Okay. Uh, Darren says, hi, Terry. All here on the B side. I know, right? The B side. Those of you who love vinyl, you know that there's the song like Michael Jackson's Billie Jean. And on the back, it could be, you know, a couple of his other songs that maybe not hit the hit parade, even though Michael Jackson's stuff always hits it. Uh, uh, that you may remember there was an A and a B side. So Darren and I are talking the fun music stuff, which I always love. I always, always love that. Okay. So I see here it says Facebook user. Uh, just go to the top where it's uh, announcing my live and it says in order to do it. And it, and, and Joe Mina will tell you, uh, that's my friend, will tell you it's not always easy. So try to give StreamYard, that's the, the venue, the platform I'm on, broadcasting from you live. Uh, but StreamYard needs permission. So you just go to StreamYard.com slash Facebook. The, the link is above. And um, and uh, give them permission to put your name here. And I'll see who this is. If for any reason you have a challenge, and many can, just tell me, hi, and your name here. And I will speak to you directly, okay, if you find your challenge. But that's how it works. Terry, we know you drink tea. Do you drink coffee as well? Uh, when my husband makes it. It's a good question, Joe. Um, my husband makes, uh, let me say that. Again. I mean, it's not specialty coffee. It's just that he's one of those, uh, he's becoming a coffee, coffee guy, the coffee guy. Um, so he has a, um, machine that makes espressos and, um, and, uh, it's called the La Pavoni. It's from Italy, I think he told me. And it was made, like, it's still made today. But the one he had, he bought years ago, and it was sitting in the garage. And he started to say to me, I wish I had a hobby that did not involve being at the computer, because that's where he works. He, you know, cuts film and edits and does all that kind of stuff for Universal and uh, so he was kind of wanting something that was different, kind of like Terry does 
Lego mural. Okay. Still art. Um, but different. Mm -hmm. So he got on YouTube just like me, but not live. He got on YouTube and he started to fo follow this, 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 this thread. And it led him down the rabbit hole of coffee. And he watched some some coffee experts talk about the different machines, um, the different uh, uh, one one coffee guy I remember told him that it starts with the grinder. And many of these grinders are like two thousand dollars a piece. And I was like, excuse me for a grinder. What are you, a barista? And uh, <laughs> he said, no, 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 I'm not going to do that. But so there's different kinds of these machines, ones where you push a button and it does it all for you. Uh, but even if it does it all for you, you still have to pack, and I may not be using the terms right, you have to pack the coffee, tamp it a certain way so that it gives you the flavor that you need. So there's still an art to it. Please, if you are someone who has one of these more automatic uh bigger machines, I'm not saying that you're not bringing in your art to it. Okay. But there are those machines like the La Pavoni where you're doing everything. Okay. It is, you have to balance everything. You have to check the heat. You have to do it. It's, it's really, uh, basic. It's like, what's it like? It's like writing code. Okay. Some of us have MacBook, but then, you know, some of us, you know, play the app. Many of you write the app code. Is that the right terminology, guys? Let me know in the comments if I'm saying it right, because this I do not do. But the point is, some of you want hands-on, and some of you just want to check. I'm in the check category, which is why everything I own has to do with Apple, okay? My phone links to my iPad, links to my uh, MacBook Pro. And no matter where I am, they all talk to each other. My husband says it's very big brother. Uh, but <laughs> but I like that, okay? One of the things I love about the iPhone, and those of you who have Androids, I know you love your Androids, but one thing I love about my iPhone <laughs> is that I can upload it to the cloud. I can then upgrade my phone, download it, and not worry about it. When I had an Android, I had to learn the phone every single time. And technology and me aren't happy with each other. We have a relationship, but it is a fiery one. Um, I know I need it. I know I need social media and I know I need to be able to broadcast. And I know, you know what I mean? But do I love it? No, I don't love it, but I like it. And why do I like it? Let me tell you right straight up why I like it. You guys, you guys have all taught me that, uh, uh, I need you as much as you need me. You know, you post in the comments some very, you, you ask certain questions that make me think. You 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 show me great heart and great uh, kindness and passion, especially on my on my of my tribe. My tribe is phenomenal, and they're always they're always surprising me. Okay, so one of the things I do is a giveaway called the treasure chest, where they can. Um, they can win the opportunity to pick something from the treasure chest. So it's a, it's a lotto ball thing and you pull, you, you each have a number. And if your number is called, you get to pick. Okay. And basically it was so I could clean my garage. Honestly, it's just so I could clean my garage. But uh, everybody started to send from the tribe, started to send me things that the tri that I could uh, put in the treasure chest for the tribe. And my back behind me, it's, it's full. I mean, the bags are high of all of the generosity from Terry's tribe. So I'm super, super touched by, by the getting to know all of you in the tribe. And if you're someone um, who thinks that might be a good fit for you, please, uh, you know, go to patreon.com slash Terry Harden and check it out. $5 a month, $60 a year. It's really, I mean, you don't have to pay the $60. You just $5 a month, you know, skip a Starbucks and you're in. Um, so love to have you basically. But, um, the coffee he makes, he has to, 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 to pull in the steam just the right way. I mean, it's kind of like operating a train. It looks like to me. And then he's got to adjust it. All this. <laughs> it's really fun to watch. He's really in his element. Um, I wish it had one of those things, you know, from Frankenstein where you go, 
get the electricity. I think he'd really dig that too. But anyway, um, then he presents to me a cup of coffee when he was when he was really working to get this balance of uh, the right, the perfect cup of coffee, Joe. Um, he would hand me a cup. And if you've ever been in a relationship where someone, one of you is cooking or the other one is cooking and they hand that they take the spoon, you know, maybe they spoon, they taste it and then they dip a spoon and they have you taste it and they're waiting for what you like you know, especially if this is their passion, they're not looking for "Mm, nice. No, they're not looking for that. They're looking for you to go a little more descriptive into what the flavors that you're tasting. So with my husband, I taste the coffee and I'd say, "Mm," and he'd say, "Mm, what? And I'd say bitter, or I'd say sour. And those are what he wants to know. And he'll say, is it sour? Is it bitter? Bitter, I think. Okay, though so he'll go make another one and he'll, he'll say, how is it now? And I'll say less sour. No, th- sour's still good, bitter's less, you know, and you're actually helping him to tune in the coffee. And now uh, he's got it tuned in to where he nails it, I think, every time. And then last week he made me an affogato. Do you know what that is? Affogato? Affogato? Yeah, yummy. It's It should say Terry's drink, affogato. I think that's how you say it. Uh, good morning, Stephen. And good morning again to Diane. Oh, I'm working. I'm just speeding with my there. From a tribe member, it's a great place to be. So much information and support from the other tribe members. Uh, this is not a paid advertisement. This is uh, Bob Berdine. And Bob Berdine uh, says often that he doesn't think of himself as an artist in the classic uh, sense of the word, but he is an artist. He teaches us, he shares with us about being, um, philanthropists. So they are charity based their heart, him and his wife, Rose, all about charities. They ran, they, they would run them for other charities. They'd run events. They'd create events. They'd make sure artists came together. They made sure artists were taken care of. Artists were fed all the stuff for, um, a lot of nonprofits. And, and it was a great, a great time to work to, to, so they talk to you about, and then they talk to you about a good way to be at a, at one of these events. How do you behave? What, what is some of the things you can do that's generous? You know, it's not always about stuff being donated. Sometimes it's just bringing your best self to the charity and talking to little kids or whatever. And we did all kinds of stuff with the Burdines I did and many artists did. Many Imagineers did, like myself, and it's been wonderful. So he shares with us that, so that when you go, you're not just phoning it in. You're you're vested in the charity. You've learned about the charity, and you go in knowing some stuff about it, so that you can be kind and make the event planners feel good and the charity feel respected. So, like I said, passion is the key ingredient. And if you are and you want to share it with other passionate people, as Bob says. Please come along. Good morning. What do you think about Bob Chespeg's fire? <laughs> Look in the mirror. <laughs> Don't you just wish he'd turn around and fire himself? I mean, seriously, Michael. So on the tribe today, we talked about my friend Evan. Evan is a personal assistant in the film business which sounds really glamorous, but it's not the most glamorous job, but it does help you to learn the film business. You're always working very hard. And sometimes it's very thankless. A lot of times it's very thankless, but he ended up on a really great set and, um, Chapek was supposed to be there. And today I asked the tribe people, what would you do if you saw Chapek come through the door? What would you do? And would you be violent? Would you be mean? Or would you simply walk up to him if the opportunity showed itself? Now, when you're working, sometimes that opportunity does not present itself. But if the opportunity presented itself and you could speak with him, what would you say? And remember, you got to be your best self for someone to listen. If you just start screaming at someone, they shut down, don't they? And think you're a, a nut. So if you want your 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 thoughts heard, you've got to be your best self. Walk up and say, hey. Can, can I have a couple minutes of your time? I don't know if he would do it because he's doing so many stupid things. I wish that I could say it kinder, but 
there are so many simple things that he could implement and the rest of the Disney brass could implement if they simply asked people who were enthusiastic about the Disney brand and Disneyland and Walt Disney World and all of the Disneylands. Oh, Chris. Honestly, so, so simple is to just ask people who go there and love it. Your life would be better. You'd be loved better. And then implement that which you ask about. That used to happen way back in the day. They used to have the advisory committee. And oh my goodness, the merchandise was choice and good. In fact, the collector said, I got to be careful. I have to take my wallet and protect it because I may spend my food money. I'm so excited about what Disney's offering. Nowadays, you're lucky if, you know, a dollar gets out because a lot of the merchandise really isn't up to par. There are a few things that slip through the cracks that are very, very nice, but most of it is, ugh. and so it's very heartbreaking. And all they have to do across the board is ask. So what is firing going to do, Michael, other than make us more angry? Because he really should be looking in the mirror and considering stepping away because he's really ruining the brand. I said it here first, Bob. I welcome you. Love to have you on so you could talk to some heart people with a lot of heart. I'd love to interview you and, and you be open and let people ask you questions. We can do it on a Zoom call. I'm available. They're all available. I'm sure they all want to do it because they love this park. This is what you, this is what these CEOs and upper people who are in a big, I don't know, a big castle somewhere, what do they not talk to you guys? Not know how much you love this 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 brand, these the Disney, Walt, all of it? You guys love this. You don't want to hurt it. You don't like him hurting it. He's dissing your family, right? Disney is your family. So what the heck? You know, that's that's what I'm feeling right there. What the heck, Michael? Um, hello, Jessica. Shameless, says Darren, unsolicited and unpaid for a plug for the tribe. <laughs> it is truly amazing group, <laughs> folks. So many people love support and times creativity from all walks of life. And that's what I'm saying. And today we talked about Bob Chapek and what we would say if we had the opportunity to be right in front of him. And the key is to be your best, not, not to lose your temper because it doesn't benefit anybody. Then you're just become this raving thing and they go, okay, security, which he would do. You know, he would do that. So you need to be your best self. May I have a moment of your time? Is there a way I can reach you later if you're busy now? I really, really would like to um, say something to you and I would like your ear for a couple of minutes. I could buy you lunch, you know, whatever. But just go in with a positive attitude and share your heart and maybe he'll listen. Now, the key is, the key is, Michael, he's, and, and Darren, and everyone, the key is Bob has to take action. And we don't know if he would be willing to do that. Hello, Angie. Michael says, mom and dad just got a coffee roaster now. I'm a coffee that's where it starts, Michael. Years ago, I didn't drink coffee, only tea. Wouldn't touch it. It was bitter. It was nasty. I love the smell of it. But every time I tried, tasted it, it was a disappointment. People of a certain age have been trained. And I want to say older people. But people of a certain age have been trained to offer you a cup of coffee when you come in to their home. It's a way of welcoming you, isn't it? My mother's era, for example, my father's era, that era, they're used to offering you a cup of coffee when you come in. When you refuse, it hurts their feelings. I didn't realize how badly it hurts their feelings until I started uh, going around with my future husband. He made different coffees to show me that a good cup of coffee is never bitter or sour. And then he told me that it was something that you have to accept, even though the coffee is terrible. So I started to do it with a very dear friend of mine's mother. 
who always offered me coffee and I always refused. And she always did look a little bit hurt. But this time I said, yes. And she just lit up. And I, she says, what are you taking it? And I said, cream only. And I will probably put, you know, depending on the flavor of the coffee, half, half and half, half milk, half coffee, uh, depending on if it's bitter or sour. And then I discovered the reason a lot of coffees, and you're going to love this, uh, Michael, because you've become a coffee snob. They were serving Folgers, U-Man, and Maxwell House. And that is the pre-ground cans, which, as you know, get get stale, get bitter, aren't they're the they're the lower they're not the 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 true because you know you've got a roaster now so you know what i mean so this is why i didn't like coffee is because they were serving me those coffees including my mom now of course you got people who are roasting their own like you they're putting it in bags and they're dating the bags my husband loves this. He can go to a nearby market that handles roasted coffees from all over Southern California. And the name is there and the date and what the balance tastes like. He is in heaven. And I'm sure you are too. Coffee roasters have been life-changing as I learn more about them. How did you and Lindsay meet? I'm sure that's your husband. Yes, Lindsay is my husband. Uh, how can I make this... <laughs> There should be, you know, birdie music. Uh, <laughs> I first met him in um, when I went to college from high school. And uh, we didn't like each other. I was an artist in the art cent in the art section. And I was learning figure drawing. And I was uh, expanding my sculpting. Painting rocks and doing sketches to put myself through college because my parents couldn't, and it was a junior college. Um, but I met Lindsay, and when I met Lindsay, I was looking down. He had a notebook sitting cross-legged at the art department with a notebook, much like this one, opened like this, and with both hands was... On this side, journaling, writing, and on this side, the exact opposite, backwards. So if it said to Terry, it said to Terry. You get it? So he was writing the reverse on this side and the actual at alarming speed. I remember just looking down at him in complete awe because I had no idea what he was doing and how was he was doing it. But... He wasn't very kind to me, and we didn't talk for a year because I thought he was a jerk. So then <laughs> a year later, I saw him at the cafeteria at the college, at the junior college. And I said, maybe that was a defense mechanism. You know, sometimes people, places, creatures will do something to put you off. And if you don't come back, well, that was him. He said that he didn't have time for acquaintances, only friends. And so since I had come back, he would now talk to me and we talked. He says, as I recanted this to him, he says that, uh, uh, is that the right word? Anyway, as I told him about it, he said, uh, he said, uh, uh, I sounded arrogant. Nah, you know, sometimes a person has to know their limitations. And if you don't have enough people who care about you, you just have a bunch of people who'd like to look like they're, you know, um, some there's people who just don't have time for those, those, those fair weather people. Right. And he didn't know which I was, so he gave me a little test, and I didn't mind. But then we were fast friends. I fell in love with him. Uh, he went off to marry someone else, broke my heart. Fifteen years we were apart. He came back. Uh, we fell in love again, and uh, we've been together ever since. So basically I say God separated us so that we could get our heads straight because the one thing I prayed for was true love, and we have true love. Absolutely. I'll have to tell you, Angie, about our wedding, which uh, uh, just goes to show you that there are forces in the world. And uh, we had one at our wedding. We were married in a wine cave in the Calistoga Valley near Napa. And uh, it was magical. I remember the, uh, the minister was just blown away, but my husband was just kind of, that's Terry.
so yeah, so it was just, it was just uh, a lovely day and we've been married since 2004. So, uh, so 2024, which comes up, it'll be 20 years. And we're actually close enough that we could actually back off and know how many years, but when you're happy and everything is a honeymoon period, you, 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 and you run out of fingers and toes to count your wedding anniversary. You just say, thank goodness. After close to 25 years, we're finally together. Yeah. It took some learning on both of us before we were finally brought together to have a life together. And, and you don't want to take that for granted when you, you have that soulmate, you want to make sure your, your life is about them um, as much as, as you know, your life is about you. Right. Yeah. You can't just, I've run into people who will make a coffee in the morning and won't make one for their, their, their husband, their wife, their significant other. Right. Um, I don't understand that you're at the coffee, you're, you're at the tea machine, you're boiling the water, pour two cups. What is the big deal? Or you're making coffee. Do you understand what I'm saying? And I get that all the time from people. People say, well, he can get up and do it himself. You know, they're making breakfast and they don't make breakfast for the other one. I, if this is your brain, you got to change that unless you're looking to, to exit. But if you really love this person, you can tell a person that you love them, but the actions following it up are what really truly say, I love you. You can say, I love you. And sometimes that's enough for people, but most of the time they want something a little bit more. With my husband, um, he likes contact. So we'll hug, we'll kiss, you know, that says, I love you for him is that arm on the shoulder, that stroke of the face. He likes physical contact. I want someone who has my back. Okay. I've been a strong woman since I was a baby girl because I'm mixed races and I had to fight for where I am. You know, I was bullied all the time. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, if you were bullied, but my hair set on fire at eight years old. Good thing I had really fast friends because they saw this haystack hair and some idiot thought it would be nice to set it on fire. Um, and I'm in the, and I'm in the eighth grade, you know? So, um, there were some life lessons I had to go through, which make me a very strong woman. So I'm not good with men who are not strong. But what happens is when you're strong and correct me if I'm wrong, you're going to attract those that are not necessarily always strong, ones that want to be taken care of, ones that want you to nurture them or to, you know what I mean? Well, uh, there's a game you play on. Um, I don't know if you were kids or, or when is it, or maybe trust where you put your arms out, you close your eyes and you fall back to see if the person catches you. He's always there to catch me. In fact, when I put my arms up, he'll put my hand there on him, on my back. Okay. This is a, this is kind of an analogy, but basically I always know he has my back. I don't have to ask. He is like the millennium Falcon. He is always there for me. So, um, for me, that's, that's the, I love you. If I have a meltdown, he counters with the calming effect. If I don't feel like cooking dinner, he handles cooking dinner. I cook dinner most of the time because I'm the one that works from home. He has a job. So it, I have no problem cooking the dinners and planning the dinners. It's not my favorite thing, but we need to eat. So I do it, but sometimes I'm just like, I can't. So he'll either order something in or he'll cook something. He'll say, I got this. Don't worry. So that's what is very special. The other thing that's super special about the two of us is we are very yin and yang. We're both artists, but we understand our artist brains. And so when we need time to work on something, um, we give each other space. We have, uh, we have an ideal situation here where I have my studio, he has his. And we know, and if you're ever, if you're with an artist and you're trying to understand why sometimes you go in and they're hard at work that they act like you don't exist, no offense, but you are in a territory where the creative brain is in full swing and you may not even be seen. This is what happened with me with the husband before Lindsay. Yes, I was married before. And it broke his heart because he would come into my studio, he would speak with me and I didn't hear him or see him or anything. And it hurt his feelings. He was not the right person for me. And I 
was more importantly, not the right woman for him. Because if somebody tells you, you love your blank more than me, you love your art more than me, you love your, your writing more than me, you love your whatever, realize that if you're, if you're like me, and I can almost say you probably are, if you're creative, uh, it's not that we love this more than you, it's that this makes up our blood and bone. Art for me is my blood and my bone and my flesh. So unless you want half a person, a skeleton walking around and one in a not good mood, then you got to take the whole package, don't you? You got to take the whole package. If the person has a passion, they golf, they, 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 you know, they have a passion. Disney, for example, if Disney is your passion and you've got someone who does nothing but diss it for you all the time, they need to understand that Disney is not um, something for many of you that is a willy nilly, uh, oh, I think I'll follow this today choice. It's part of your whole uh, creative makeup in your bone and your blood and your veins. And there's nothing wrong with that. Just ask people who like sports. I never underestimate that sport fans don't have it as part of their makeup too. Their blood, their bones bleed. They bleed blue if they like Dodgers, for example. They're so into it. It's not that they love the Dodgers more than you. It's that the Dodgers are part of what makes them who they are. And that's what I'm talking about. So, uh, so this is what's lovely about my husband is that we know that art is a part of our lives and part of our DNA. And so we, we have created a room in our home where we come together, sit, have a coffee and chalk. If you come into my studio and you talk, or I go into his studio and I talk, we have a 50-50 chance of the other person hearing us because that's the zone, the creative zone. You're focused on what you're doing, you know, and uh, we're not hurt if the other person, what was it? You're, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I was designing, uh, I was designing Dragon's Lair, uh, you know, so um so this is what, if you, if you fall in love with an artist or someone creative or you're creative yourself, uh, be patient, you know, be patient in today's world where you swipe a direction and most of it is looks, um, you, you, you've got to dig deeper. You've got to fall in love with what's underneath. Yes. Looks fade, but you got to know the true, uh, DNA of the person, the soul of the person, your hearts have to connect. This, you know, you've all probably had a cake where the where the the cake was awful, the frosting was good, right? So don't just look at the frosting of people. You've got to dig deeper. You've got to connect, you know, on a on a much more primitive level because the hearts are what's going to sustain a good marriage. Just ask anybody who's been married for a long time. The hearts are what is the major connection and the rest of it evolves from there. And then also brain, the brains together, because you excite each other by this uh, yin and yang effect. So when my husband and I are creative together, when Lindsay and I are creative together, it's, it's magical. It is like, you know, if you see fireworks coming from Southern California, you know, we're, we're creating again together. <laughs> Thank you for that question. Andy it was very sweet. I love going down that, that path. Uh, Lindsay's going to go with me to celebrate my birthday um, in the next week or so. And I'm just really excited because I love to be everywhere he is, you know, uh, Yes, yes. <laughs> You're so cute. It's name. <laughs> Unfortunately, now your garage isn't getting. Yes, exactly, Darren. I go in and I put like today, I, I got to go into my garage and dig around and see uh, what was out there because I want to do a really spectacular thing for you guys here um, to bid on so I can get some more, um, raise some more funds for Chakwa. Uh, and so I did go into my garage for that because, you know, I want to get something that you guys don't have. And that means it's got to come from my garage because <laughs> there's a lot in there. That, well, you might have it, but you may not want to, you know, part with it, you know, so exactly. So it could be anything. I'm, I'm seriously thinking about what it could be. Indeed. 
Uh, hey, Terry and all. Hope you're having a good day. Hello, Miss Charlotte. How are you? Good to see you too. Uh, he made me an avocado. No, avocados are good for the heart though. Yeah, uh, avocado. It's a, I'll tell you what it is. It is uh, coffee and it's, a, it's an, uh, let me see if I say this right because I could be wrong. But when it comes to me, it is an espresso with vanilla ice cream. Yeah. So it has kind of a deep coffee balance with the French vanilla ice cream, cold with the warm, with the, it's unbelievable how the flavors linger long after the, 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 the drink is gone. Yeah. I had had a really crazy uh, day. You know that, you know, you'll hear people say, uh, um, what is it? Successful people plan out their day, plan out their week, blah, blah, blah. I do that. Yeah, I do that. And, but what successful people also do is when uh, a, a frying pan crashes through your window and disrupts your entire day, what you had planned, some, some earthquake Richter scale thing happens in your life. <laughs> And you go, oh my gosh, you just have to be calm enough or or uh, uh, awake enough to land on your feet like a cat. You know, so when 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 life throws you lemons, you got to be able to catch them and make lemonade. You don't always succeed, but you have to have that alertness about yourself. You can't be so ingrained in your schedule that when that happens, you have a meltdown. That being said, you sometimes still have a meltdown. And this happened to me a few days ago. I just became overwhelmed. And I sat there kind of going, doing the, the meditation breathing or whatever you do. For me, it's closing my eyes and just steadying my breathing and saying to myself, hey, I, it's not rocket science. You know, nobody is going to die. If this doesn't happen, nobody's going to die. Unlike surgeons, caregivers, people like this, who I don't know, you know, it'd be very interesting to hear how they cope with those kind of days um, because someone could die. And, uh, but for me, my art uh, isn't like that and uh, my situations, but I just got to a point where I was like, G -g 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 -g. and he walked around the corner with the uh, affogato and uh, I, he just very quietly handed it to me with a spoon and I took a bite and everything fell off, fell away. All of the prickles came, fell right off. You know, it just was such a warm, comfy place to be. And that's what I'm talking about. You know, it's a relationship that's just, it's just, it's just amazing. It's just amazing. So patience for you youngsters out there or you're young at heart out there who have not found that, that person, please don't jump at the first person who looks like they're giving you their attention. Be careful, be wise, and, and take some time before you decide to uh, go to the next step. Okay. You know, before you jump into, you know, you jump between the sheets with them or you uh, marry, you know, take your time, get to know that person. And if that person isn't interested, that's time to show them the door because they're just looking for a hookup then. Okay. If you want true love, it doesn't grow on trees. It's a very rare, rare, special jewel and special jewels take time to find, you know, a diamond just doesn't come out of the earth. It takes time for the coal to be created into a diamond. So give yourself the same respect. Okay. You're a very special person out there. You deserve a special someone to share your life with. And patience is most of it. Okay. Get to know that person here. Okay. Because doing other things changes the feelings, the emotions, etc. I was having my hair done yesterday. And uh, one of the other ladies, you know how salons are. They have a couple people. After the pandemic, they just have a couple people. They don't have a room full of people like we did before, a couple people where he keeps it down. And she told, was telling us about her daughter, and her daughter was just seeming to 
to have this devil may care attitude where, um, you know, she had a friend and the friend had a boyfriend and the boyfriend might've been a cheater. And then she found out the boyfriend was because when his girlfriend went out of town, she ended up connecting with him. And then when she came back into town, he got engaged with the girlfriend that had left. Yet here is her best friend going, look what I just did. You know what I'm saying? She didn't say, look what I just did, but look what she did. Okay. So I'm just saying danger, danger, warning, just realize, you know, be good to each other. Okay. And if you can't tell them outright, then it may not be the right thing to do is all I'm saying. Can you believe that from avocado and how'd you meet your husband? See? Yeah. Subscribe. If you like this roller coaster that you're on. <laughs> Yes. A Mexican lawyer. Yes, that's it. The Mexican lawyer coffee. Well, doesn't it sound kind of like a lawyer? Right? It's an avogado, I think. I don't know. Look up amazing coffee with ice cream and tell me how to pronounce it, Joe. My husband's working or I'd ask him. The point is it's delicious. You see, I don't twist the small stuff. I don't worry about stuff like that. Mm -mm. Production assistant, not personal, just a reminder, LAO. Production or personal. They can be either. Okay. Production assistant, personal assistant. A production assistant can be a personal assistant. Just so you know, Darren. A production assistant can be assigned to an actor or actress and be their personal assistant for that date. Mm -hmm. So we're both right. And I'm not dissing you. I'm just saying thank you for production assistant, but you can be either or because I've worked with both. On Shark, a production assistant became my personal assistant for the day. C to Terry. Isn't that a personal assistant, don't you think? Mm-hmm. Mm, implementation is the most important part of having an advisory committee. True. And Disney used to do it like crazy. And man, you if you remember those days of the 50th anniversary for Disneyland, forgive me, you will remember how that merchandise was just unbelievable. So, and, and, and I've seen some Walt Disney World um, 50th anniversary merchandise. And I got to tell you, I really love the gold and dark blue colors. Um, Darren, I think it was you that sent me the tea and I can't even open it because the envelope is so pretty. But then they, apparently they have these beautiful gold. I haven't been to Walt Disney World, so forgive me. Since before the pandemic and I'm really missing it. But uh, uh, they, uh, have these gold statues with these beautiful blue bases uh, for the 50th. And they look like little, they, they're just gorgeous. And you can buy them yourself. I've seen a couple of you show me the sculptures that replicate the big golden statue at the, the characters like Figment and, and Tinkerbell and, and what else is there? But the castle, I guess they did one of the castles. And they're really pretty, you know, like this. I don't know what I would do with them at home, but at least they're quality. They're very, very beautiful. They're very, very nice. Uh, if you're thinking about joining Terry's Tribe, just do it. Seriously, you'll be glad you did. Thank you, Michelle. Michelle and I are, are painters that are being uh, at an in an auction. Yeah, for the Chuck Jones Center for Creativity, we both painted. And so uh, she's lovely. She took a chance because she paints usually in oils, but this time she decided to take a chance and paint in acrylics. And uh, I am working on painting because <laughs> I'm a sculptor. <laughs> so I'm just learning, just been working on improving my painting period. Uh, and I'm doing acrylics as well. So um, yeah, so it's been fun to just have uh, Michelle virtually by my side through the tribe and Ron occasionally Ron's a, Ron is a, a, a very, very seasoned painter. I'm not saying Michelle isn't, but Ron seems to be able to burp up a good painting better than I can. Well, I think Michelle can too, actually, better than I can, because I've only been painting for about a year. So I can't expect, you know, um, Rembrandt quality, but I can strive for it. <laughs> so 
So if you're doing something new, you know, give yourself a break is what I'm saying. Thank you, Michelle. Thank you, Bob. You guys are so sweet. Did you see Martha Stewart's tag sale? I wonder how much she raised. When I moved a few years ago, I had a great sale of my treasured stuff. It was nice to see people who are going to love this stuff as much as, as I did. That's exactly right, David. That's No, I did not see Martha Stewart's um, tag sale. Uh, I stay away from things I might want to partake in. <laughs> like the other day, a guy was saying, you know, in order to say, you know, the best way to uh, uh, to make money not be, you know, to afford what you want to afford is not spend money um, on things you don't need. This was his statement, which sounds kind of obvious, right? Don't spend money on things you don't need. Avoid instant gratification. Well, for me, that's a bookstore and an art supply store. <laughs> so I don't go in those. Uh, it's hard because if I hear about a book that I want to read, uh, I, I'll, I'll, I'll grab it. And uh, uh, so I have to be careful. So I have to be careful going around Amazon. I have to be careful, you know, make sure I go in for things I need, not for things I want. Um, I am getting ready. Uh, my husband asked me what I wanted for my birthday and I want a cricket that cutting machine. I've got so many ideas to use it. Thanks to a lot of people in my tribe, but also other people that I came across on YouTube who have just got me super excited to have one of these paper cutting machines. Um, but I'm trying to figure out which one I should get. So a lot of people in the tribe are advising me if you have any advice as to which cricket. So far, everybody is telling me the latest and the greatest one because it's faster, it's quieter, uh, it's updated, you know, so on and so forth. But, but, uh, and the only reason I'm hesitant is, is because I want to make sure that I use it to at least 50% of its full potential. If there's anything I wouldn't be using it, would the earlier version be better because it doesn't do that and I can save a little bit of money. Um, but a lot of people are saying, so if you have a cricket and you love it, or you have the latest cricket, um, and you want to give me some advice, one of the biggest things is to wait three seconds before you get into an intersection. That's a quote from Jim Rohn to me personally. And what that means is you just take your time. It's not going anywhere. It's not going to disappear. And if it does, it'll be back. So really be sure before you invest in something or you buy something, you might give yourself a little bit of time to think about it. Yeah. Yeah. Just a little bit of time to think about it. So, um, so that's what I'm doing. And I'm asking advice from you guys, because I think if JPEG did this, if other people did this, we would have a better Disneyland. I, I'm sorry. I'm a, a glass. Uh, I'm not sorry, but I'm a glass half full kind of a gal. And I just don't understand why more of the Disney higher ups try to do it all by themselves. It's hard to guess what people want. It's so much easier to ask them. So um, thank you. I, 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 I agree with you, David. And this is why I do the tribe. Like some of the things I got to sell through eBay because they're not like ridiculous. They're worth uh, a ridiculous amount of money. So they either need to be auctioned or they need to be. But the things that I have, like I have tons of pins, um, tags. What else have I given away? Um, um, journals. I mean, just things that weren't necessarily, you know, but, you know, I have a few very rare things, but I, but I have a lot of things that are unusual and different to the tribe. And so I, I share them with the tribe all the time and it, and it's, it's helping. And it's so interesting to see what the tribe likes and so on and so forth. So, uh, thank you for that. And Bob is doing smiling again. Hi everyone. It's Bella, Bella. Auntie Charlotte, hello, 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 all of you. How is everybody doing? I hope you're all better. We miss you. I miss you. I'd like to try and schedule something next year uh, to come out and see you guys. Um, this year is a little, a little weird, so um, I'd rather do it next year. So let's stay in touch, okay? All right, cool. I'm so excited you're here. I miss you guys. This is my UK team. Yeah, this is my my peeps. We're, we were going to get together in the UK and then COVID hit. Dun, dun, dun. Yes, 
Uh, Darren says, Bella, I hope you were able to see all the positive comments about your stitch drawing. Yeah, Bella did an adorable stitch drawing. And like many artists, it wasn't perfect. But our drawings are never perfect in our own eyes. And that's a good thing. It makes you unique. But I told Bella I have to dig up a drawing I did when I was uh, in uh, high school that I absolutely hated. My teacher, art teacher, saw it and entered it in several contests. And it won every single one first place. And I accepted the trophies looking at everyone like they were under some sort of magic spell. Couldn't they see how bad this drawing was? And um, so I, I told Bill, I know how you feel, but hang on to it because it has the criteria that a good drawing has. First of all, it looks like the character that you were drawing. Does it look exactly like the character? Well, no, but that's because you drew it. When you draw your, ver you know, you're drawing, you're exploring, but we knew who you were drawing, okay? We all could guess. And so that shows that you're doing a great job at what, college level? No, Bella, what are you, 11? <laughs> you're still seven in my mind. You know that, Bella. You're still seven, you know, when we met at Disneyland Paris, you know, I, 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 why do people do that? Meaning me, you know, you think of people at that age and then when they show up, you go, Whoa, you've grown. <laughs> um, Joe says, I prefer sugar cream or half and half in my, and he's going to say coffee. Watch there it is. <laughs> yeah. I'm just a cream person. Same with my tea. I, I like cream in my tea. When I was in Japan, I got hooked on, on milk tea. Have you ever had milk tea? Have you ever been to Japan? They, they have these vending machines that are so amazing. Absolutely the coolest vending machines. They have bottles inside of a vending machine, and the, when it dispenses it, the liquid is warm. So you can have hot milk tea come out to you in a bottle or a can or something, pop it, and it's hot and steam. Oh, Japan. <sighs> oh, that country just is so full of innovation. You know, you're just like, wow, it explodes with just creativity. They're always doing something amazing. And I always turn around and go, what? You know, um, I remember that I was there in 07. I took my, my husband to Japan for a month because I had sold my Star Wars collection and gotten quite a bit for it. So I had him poke a pin in the map and he of course wanted to go to Japan because um, Disney sees as the Nautilus there from 20,000 leagues that they built a whole world around it. And he just had to see it and he was very happy. But while we were there, um, we met so many different creative people and saw so many innovations because Japan is a small island and they have a lot of people. So they have to figure out how to do certain things that we who have a state as big as California um, don't necessarily need to worry about. Uh, one of it is how do you take care of your dead? And a lot of times the gardens are on rooftops and sometimes it's up, up a mountainside. Absolutely incredible. Car parking. They have things like little rotisseries that go around. Now, you've seen these now in movies, but back in that day, this was like, whoa, you know, the car pulls in and goes. Up. So it's like, you know, it's like when you ordered a sandwich back in the day of the 50s, you know, you put the sandwich to the window, then you put your money in, you open the door and you pull the sandwich out. It may be before your time, but that's what I thought about the cars. You know, you push a button in the car, your car goes. Push. And you get in and you drive it out. They had computers that looked like compacts. They were this big. And they were playing video games on them. And they were doing all this really cool things well before that, 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 uh, what is it? The, uh, um, that the kids play the games on PlayStation. That's like this big and colorful. See, I don't own one. So you can tell. But, but they were doing that in 07. And what is this? 2021. So they are amazing there. And they come up with stuff. And you look and you go, oh, my gosh, where did that come from? It's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun to be around um, Japan and see their latest innovations because they're so far 
uh, advanced in, in many ways. Just, just so cool to see the Akihabara, which is the electronic, uh, you know, Christmas place. <laughs> the Akihabara place to avoid if you like that sort of thing. But anyway, really, really awesome. So yeah. So to answer your question, um, I got, I fell in love with this hot coffee in a bottle. I would go to vending machines and even if I didn't need a drink, I wanted to have it fall out and go. And go. Oh, so yeah. Wow. To this day, I'm a milk tea freak. Uh, David says, I'm not a fan of hot drinks, so I never was a coffee drinker till McDonald's had iced coffee for a dollar. I'm a fan now. Yes, the iced coffee is good, isn't it? And there's ways you can make iced coffee. So uh, my husband got me this super cool device. I'll have to show you the box. I don't have it. It's in the place where I'm not better known as my main house. I'm in my studio right now, but it's a box. And you, you, the, the tumbler is about like, yay. And like, yay. And you open it when you get it, you clean it, you know, and everything. And then you open it and you pour water in the rim and then you close it all up, lock it all up and you put it in the freezer. And then you can put it underneath your Keurig, put hot co coffee, uh, coffee in. It goes, because, <laughs> you know, the ice is cooling it. it. takes a minute to cool it. And then you put ice in your glass with a little of that cream, David. And you, and you have your iced coffee in like one minute. It's so cool. It's just the coolest mug ever, you know, because a lot of times I don't have the, I, I'm not into iced coffee mixes or iced coffee drinks that they, you know, because they don't necessarily have them for a dollar anymore. It's a little more expensive, but now you can do it yourself at home and it's delicious and you can have any kind of coffee you want and it goes that fast. Oh, they're just wonderful. So if you're interested, I'll see if I can pull out the box of that machine. And it wasn't very expensive. It was a few dollars. Yeah. So I'm a, another innovative person doing what they do, inventing. <laughs> I don't drink a lot of coffee, but mine of choice is nitro cold brew. Okay. I, um, I don't know that I've had that. I don't know. I've not had that one. I couldn't tell you the names of them because my husband picks. But it's certainly not, um, you know, he used to love uh, uh, Pete's coffee and I'm not a fan of Starbucks at all. So it's local growers around here, local local roasters. We go to local roasting shops. He gets the beans and roasts them in his very special way. And that's what we do. When in doubt, when we need a quick cup, we use the Keurig. Um, a lot of coffee drinkers giggle at me because we use the Keurig, but the Keurig is a, if you don't have one of these machines, um, there are uh, components that you can get that make them not be landfill creators. Okay. Cause that was the biggest complaint is that the Keurig pods do not recycle. And so uh, a couple of people came up with recyclable pods. You put the coffee inside put it in your Keurig and your Keurig can make it. But the reason the Keurig is so good is if you're having a gathering, which I don't know how many of those are happening with the pandemic, but what really made the Keurig great is that as with you, you could be making your coffee for two all the time, all the time, all the time, all the time, and never touch that Keurig machine. Right. I use it to heat water actually, because it gets it hotter. So I really like it as opposed to microwave. So I use my Keurig, just run water, you know, just heat water for my tea. But if you're one of these people who is a coffee connoisseur or a coffee snob and you're going Keurig cups, ugh, you, well, here's the thing. You can keep a set of Keurig cups for the person who likes decaf. You don't drink decaf and you don't want it on the shelf for 20 years, a pound of it or a half a pound of it. Because you're not going to ever drink it, decaf. You're going to drink the loaded stuff. But you got someone who's going to come over and they go, oh, no, I can't have caffeine. I need decaf. Well, you got the little cup. You pop it into the Keurig. It makes one cup. And that person is happy. So this is what my mother-in-law discovered because she loves to entertain. But somebody wants decaf. Somebody wants a mocha. Somebody wants tea. Somebody wants hot cider. Somebody wants, and the Keurig is just a matter of. They also make a rack where you can have them right there and go, hey, go make your cup. And they have a fun time doing it, you know? So, 
and it doesn't have to be a big machine. It can be a little machine. They have these nice little machines and they all use those K cups or you can get the ones that are recyclable. So think about it the next time you are tired of making your 20th cup of coffee at Thanksgiving because everybody wants a different one. <laughs> I'll have hot cocoa. I'll have tea. You used to just get exhausted. But that curing changes it. My mother-in-law fell in love with it because uh, somebody wants decaf, somebody wants cocoa, somebody wants cider, somebody wants fill in the blank. Terry will have tea. Uh, they, they, she just, you know. And if you know the person has a Keurig, you can bring your your own. Like, you know, maybe they like the K cups and they're they're filling up something that could be a landfill, and you're like, no, I want to have. You, you can bring the one that's recyclable with your coffee in it. So it all works. It all it, it is a great little machine, and uh, uh, it serves a purpose when it it keeps you from going insane. If you've got a family where they all want something different and you're trying to cook a turkey, <laughs> why don't you go uh, make your own coffee? And for the coffee snob, then when dessert comes, you can pull out your choice roasted coffee and brew it and give it to everybody. And it becomes this lovely experience with their dessert. And everybody tries it because it's your art you're doing. You see? So you can still do the art. But when it comes to those people who just want a cup of, they don't even care. Just give me a cup of coffee. Just give me a chocolate. Just give me a hot apple juice, whatever. You know, you're, you're there. You got it. So that's why I like that machine. Uh, background music, close to you. <laughs> Thank you, Bob. He's always thinking. Um, you have an you have amazing dreadlocks. Thank you, Darren. Is there a sleep routine that you need to do? They don't get tangled up at night. Not having them myself, I'm just curious. My personal bedhead hair is too funny. Well, you know, if you have okay, so this is a great question, Darren. Um, I want to say this in a certain way, and it's not because I'm worried about insulting people. It's just I want to say it in a certain way. So, uh, uh, people all have different texture, uh, textures of hair and they also have different, like thin, medium, thick. Okay. So not all black people and people of color have thick hair and not all white people have thin hair. Okay. There are thick, there's, 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 there's thin hair, medium hair, thick hair across the board with people. So Whoopi Goldberg, for example, has thinner hair. And so she has a makeup artist and hairstylist that help work with her hair. So it stays uh, in the best condition that it can be and look the best that it can be. She has stylists who know her hair texture and type, and they give it they make it the best that it can be. Same with me. I could go and surf and just let the dreadlocks do what they do, but I want them to be clean. I want them to be nice. And I want them myself to look professional. So I have a professional guy do it. Now, the thing that may surprise you is the guy who does my hair is not black. He's white. He's just the best hairstylist for um, um, African-American hair, people of color, black hair, uh, textured hair like this uh, in Southern California, in my opinion. Um, he just really has it down. He knows how to do it. He knows how to make it look beautiful and take care of it. Sleeping wise, uh, it depends on the person, the skin tone, just like everybody. So you can have oily hair, you can have dry hair, you can have treated hair, not treated hair. The thing I love about my dreadlocks is it uses my hair's natural property to create the dreadlocks. So I have my father's hair, my dad's black. So this hair twists on itself. And my hair stylist, uh, who's just done the top here, he uses a dreading wax and twists what's called new growth. So if you watch me in later, because you know, the closer you get to 
uh, July, you'll see that there's there'll be like more fuzz here because it's growing out, growing out. And then I'll go and get it retwisted and then washed and dried. Right now, you can see how long it is <laughs> because my hairdresser really has this thing right now about long hair. I usually keep it. I usually cut it at about here. So look how much longer it is since, you know, I like to have it about here um, as long as I can tie it up and get it out of my face. But I have very thick hair. All of this is mine. So um, I remember a woman wanted to do, you know, those little like figure eight things and then you make a ponytail and you use a little stick to put it in the back. None of them fit my hair. I cannot make a ponytail. That's because if we go like this, and you grab it, you can see how big the, um, <laughs> maybe I'll do it sideways there. You can see how big the ponytail would be. Look, look how big it is. This is because it's that thick. So people go, is it heavy? No, nah, it's with me all the time. So I couldn't tell you if it's heavy. I'll get lightheaded if I ever cut it super, super short, just like most people with long hair. You don't really know the weight till you cut it. But uh, to keep it nice, I've discovered that my skin is not dry and it's not oily. It's like most people, it's combination. But I can only wash my hair once every five days. If I wash it more than that, it makes my hair too dry and brittle. Because you have to work. This type of hair holds the oil against the scalp. And so you, you want to just work, you want the oils to get into the hair. And then about every five days I wash it. Now washing it is a challenge. It's like, you know, um, wish I could hang myself up and sort of dunk myself in the whatever, in a bowl, like, beep, beep, beep. but drying it is what really takes the time because it's very, very absorbent when it's this thick. And it works like a mop. So when you dip a classic mop in water and you pull it out, it becomes a water hazard. This is the same. So we use ShamWow to dry it. Have you heard of ShamWow? You know, that thing that absorbs a lot of water? It works beautifully. It is a great tool. And uh, it absorbs a lot of water, which is in a hair, hair salon is good because you don't want someone slipping and falling because one of your girls is a water hazard, namely me. And so sleeping wise, I'll usually use a, a satin pillowcase or a smooth pillowcase just to keep it from getting a little fluffy. But other than that, no, the main thing is that if you just lay down, you'll be laying on this and then you'll have an imprint in your face. Like when you turn, you'll have all the dreadlocks. So I pull it up and hang it over the back of a pillow and then sleep like that. So I just pull it all up and it goes up. <laughs> it's a good question, right? It's a good question, Taryn, because it's because it's funny. But a lot of people will say, is that all your hair? Because a lot of people will get what's called extensions, including people who have dreadlocks. Extensions can be sewn to the other bits of hair to make your hair look thicker. But my and mine is all mine. Mine is uh, I have thick hair. But there are people who have thin hair that have dreadlocks as well. So you just got to be aware. And so sometimes if you make the dreadlock, I should go this way so you could see it with the background. If you make the dreadlock too thin, they'll break off. They'll actually fall out and break and you'll lose hair. So you don't want them too thin. Um, heavier, of course, there's more at your base. So this is this is my speed. I like it about that thick. You see how thick they are. So I like them like that. Yeah. Yeah, this makes it. Yeah, I like it like that. Yep. Um, I hope that answered the question. <laughs> I love your true love story. Thank you, Michelle. There's more to it. But uh, uh, it takes a while to tell it all the detail. So, so when we're sitting at the gala, if we get bored, I'll tell you more. Except for he might be with me and he doesn't like me to tell it because he gets all... He gets all do you ever see Major Pain, which is a is my guilty pleasure? Pleasure. Little boy hugs him and he says, "Ew, it making me all feel squishy." Yeah, I think that's my husband. <laughs> it, it makes him turn red. Um, you glow every time you speak of him. Uh, he's, he, if you knew what it took, uh, I knew I knew he was the one. So I just had to be faithful. And then you don't covet a married man. He married someone else and had a lovely son. 
and uh, we were apart for 15 years. And then he came back and then 11 years together and we got engaged and uh, yeah, we, we took our time. When I say patient, we took our time. Yes, we did. But uh, I knew he was the one. I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. I knew it in my heart and my soul. And I tried to move on when he married someone else because my heart had been broken. But uh, you don't covet a married man. And then he walked back into my life. And uh, and uh, we've never looked back. Yeah. Yeah. And what was lovely is that my, my stepson from his previous marriage, his son, uh, gave me away at the wedding. So he adopted me and gave me away on the same day. So it was lovely. We waited till he was 18 before we got married. And uh, when he turned 18, it was really pretty. It was beautiful. Up in the uh, Hans Faden Winery in the Calistoga Valley. It was, it was, it was an amazing day. Just a few people in a wine cave and, uh, and it was magical. There was electricity. That's for sure. And uh, it's beautiful. Just beautiful. So, yeah. So thank you. Thank you for saying that, Angie. It's sweet of you to say that. Yes, I have done, done lots more. Grandma has said I have to keep them and show them to show the tribe. You know, Bella, the thing that makes the tribe so special is that they're always going to talk to you and be kind when they do. So we're always going to help you improve your drawing if that's what you want. But no one in there is going to be mean. And if they are, which they never are, it's a great safe space where people are already in your corner. They already have your back to get the, 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 the advice that you want. And that's important. You can't, a lot of times you can't ask for advice on a public page because you never know if the people that are delivering it to you are doing it with care, I mean, I think, you'd know, mostly, but in the tribe, it's everyone. So that way you're in a safe environment to experiment. If it doesn't work out, I often tell the story of my dear friend, Liz Reed, who's also out of the UK during the pandemic, she was missing Disneyland Paris so much. She wanted to paint the castle on a, a wall behind her. And I wasn't there. Um, sadly enough, I wasn't there. She was painting the castle when she used the wrong color, in her opinion. And it was her first painting of, 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 of something on the wall. But she just really wanted that Disney castle in there because she couldn't get to Disney Paris. And Disney Paris is in her blood. Remember I told you it makes up? Yeah, Liz wouldn't be Liz if Disneyland Paris wasn't wasn't a part of her life. So she painted this castle and she used the wrong color and she really was upset. She thought she had destroyed it. And I wasn't there to say whatever I would say, but the tribe was, and the tribe just talked her down from, from the ledge. She, she was really, really sad and they helped her and they gave her techniques and processes. And she was right there trying it and posting it. And they were like, yeah, that's it. That's it. Try it. See if you like it. And the next thing you know, she has a castle on her wall with the dragon too. And she thanked everybody. She was so proud of it when she was done. It was her very first thing, but that's what I mean. If you're going to take, if you're going to jump off a ledge and it's something that makes you nervous, it's nice to have a nice feather bed to fall into. And that's Terry's tribe. Hello, Miss Angie. Have you worked together on projects, any project that you like to work with him on? We've worked on this. So this broadcasting system and the fact that I can cut to here and say, hi, how you doing? Or cut to here and say, look, don't I have a cool journal? Um, or cut to here and say, take a look at that happy girl with her sculpted Yoda puppet. She definitely does love Star Wars. Uh, all of that is my husband. He set up this whole thing for me. So that I could broadcast to you. And we've been doing it ever since the pandemic for real. I mean, I do, I try to be as, I work to be as consistent as possible. As far as art projects, yes, indeed. We have done uh, several together and uh, I love every time we do. So as, uh, as the world starts to shift and change for us, like my birthday is June 21st and I'm going to be the big 65. Woohoo! Uh, 
the next adventure in my life. Dun, dun, dun. Um, but we're very excited about that. And there's some shifts that are going to be happening. And we're both trying to figure out what our life will look like in the next few years and what we want it to look like. And that's fun to sit together with a cup of coffee, Joe and um, and David, and many of you who have talked about coffee today, uh, with a cup of coffee, sit on the porch swing and say, what do you want to do today? You know, and, and do it together. So I'm really hoping that we create something visual. I'd like to do something fun and visual because he's such, he's got such a good eye and he's a great director. So I would love for us to create some sort of story that we want to do for the internet and then do it. We've come close on a couple of them, but we've involved a few other people and those other people kind of go, yeah, they changed their mind. So we had one that we were doing and we were really loving it. All of us were really getting into it, but you know, a step in any direction, even if it's the wrong one creates momentum and it created momentum for this fella. And then he didn't need to do the show anymore. So he walked away from it and we were kind of like, Oh, we wanted to do more. We were so excited to do more. We were having such a good time. And it was for the internet. So uh, so puppetry, I've been asked if uh, if I, I can't do puppetry anymore. Yes, I can, but my attitude has changed. So I want to do my own stuff. So, you know, should Muppets call, I will be happy to lend my services. It's not that I'm being all, you know, snooty about it. But I'm working, I'm, I'm getting, I think, if I can, those of you who are younger, if I can describe what 65 is meaning to me, it means creating my own art. I've been doing a lot of Disney. I've been doing art for, you know, that represents other people's characters and things, but I'm ready to do my own. I want to do my own. I'm so excited to do my own, eager to do my own. And um, so I want to explore what, what does, what does that mean? And it's on so many levels. Doesn't mean that I might not do something from Star Wars. Doesn't mean that I might not do something from Disney. But I don't want to be Disney centric. I want to start finding out what is a Terry piece. My sculptures look like my work. So now I'd love my paintings to look like my work. I'd like it to be my style. What is that? I don't know. I'm too. I'm young in painting. So I'd like to take time to really knock out. You know, maybe a you know, just take a month to just paint every day. And that could be so fun, you know, good and bad. I think I would learn a lot. So that's kind of where I'm leaning. And my husband as well, he's like, what do you want to do when, um, you know, as we get older, do we want to shift? Do we want to, what, what do we want to do? And I'm saying, I know what we want to do. I want to do this. So there you have it. Yep. 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 That's it. That's what I want. That's what I want. <laughs> so yes, Angie, we have, and we will again, we will again, right now we cre we're creating content for you guys on the Patreon page. We're creating some behind the scenes or there's a, a level in Patreon where you pay $10 a month and it's called behind the scenes. It's not necessarily behind the scenes, but it's a peak in my life that you don't see on camera here. So, for example, um, if you attended the uh, Disney Legends event, we're going to pull up some clips that uh, he did for that. And we may share some of them publicly, but we're definitely talking about, you know, we did a, a, a walk. Um, I, I was invited to the last Jurassic thing, Jurassic World, and I got to sit in all, like the spinner car bubble thing. And I got to, you know, put my hand next to the footprint and stand next to a dinosaur and all that because I went to a special screening. So that's what I'm talking about. You get to kind of peek into those special events and things that I got to do. I'll take a few shots or do some video or something. So that's at that level. And every once in a while, I'll give you a sneak peek at the $5 level because I can. Um, but that's the second level. And then um, I want to teach, do some tutorials that you guys can learn about puppets, learn about clay, learn about drawing and painting through my point of view, which is like not like a lot of other people it's about getting you to do it over so um i need to get on it but right now i have i have quite a few commissions um not bragging but there's a few commissions that i have to get done and i'd like to get those done first 
because what's fun is doing your own stuff. And then you're doing the commissions, which is somebody else's stuff. But that doesn't mean it's not fun. It just means that you could be distracted doing that. So you, you've got to stay focused. And focused means let's get the product out for the person who's been kind enough to say, yes, I want that. And I'm, 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 I'm buying it. So, you know, you don't make them wait. I had to make them wait a long time with the ghosts. And they were so understanding because it wasn't my fault. But it still was frustrating. So you just try to, you know... You do the best you can, right? You do the best you can. But yeah. Um, all you need is a Lindsay in your life. It's true, Darren. And a lot of people, Lindsay says, my husband, for those of you joining us later, Lindsay says, <laughs> people look at him and wonder why we're together. Because I am this magpie. Mur, 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 mur. You can tell. We're at an hour and a half and I'm not showing any signs of letting up. Um but my husband is more quiet, more pensive. I, I call, uh, if you were to describe us as birds, it's um, the eagle and the finch. So the little finch, burp, 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 yours truly, and the great eagle who just sort of listens. And then when he's heard something, he'll say something. And it's always very observant and very profound. Once in a while, he'll come out with a poem, with a pun or a limerick, because that's the uh, 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 silly side of him. He'll pun and limerick. I mean, I'm sure, Darren, you saw that. He loves that. And he's a shanty guy. He loves shanties. So, again, Darren would love that because being music, he's, he's really good. He's got a, a lovely little concertina that he relaxes by playing and... Um, Music is a major part of his life. He can pick up just about any inner instrument and make it do something. And I just kind of look at him and go, oh, my God, you know. But uh, he's very good at it. And uh, uh, it's wonderful to watch, you know. When he's waiting for something to render, he'll play a little tune, you know. <laughs> it's pretty impressive. It's pretty dog. It, it intimidated a lot of folks back in the day when he was younger. And he always felt bad about it. And and so this comes to if you're a unicorn, you got to own it because you're going to be a unicorn. That's just the way it is. So own it that you're a unicorn. You're not showing off. You're just it's just something that you do. You thought everybody did it. Um, and when you find out everybody doesn't and someone accuses you of showing off, you're like, I didn't realize this was a special ability. <laughs> I thought everybody could burp apart. <laughs> you can't? What? Yeah, that's that's the thing. Okay, so when you're a unicorn, you, you think everybody's a unicorn until somebody tells you different, right? <coughs> Are people throwing pants throwing pants through your windows a lot in your neighborhood, Terry? Not in the literal sense, but in the life sense, yeah. Yeah, I had one fly through my window on Monday. Uh, figuratively speaking, Joe, when um, my mother, who is in a convalescent hospital, the hospital has COVID and it's code yellow. And what code yellow means is that they're not sure where the, uh, I don't want to say infection site, that's the wrong word. They're not sure how the virus is being uh, circulated. That's what I can say. So the whole floor is code yellow. They have uh, 15 patients that are level red, meaning they've got COVID and they are dealing with it. But the whole floor is yellow because they're not sure of how it is being transmitted since many people, uh, if they're moving around, are wearing masks. And you as a family person coming from the outside in, cannot be anywhere on that floor without a mask. But because of this, I check every week to see if my father and I can go visit my mother. We can't do it together. Only one person per bed per day. And it's a three bed uh, facility that my mother is in. So we are responsible to test temperature, to show vaccine card, and if we're sick, not show up. But uh, all of a sudden this happened a couple of weeks ago and I just told the scheduler said, if you're not comfortable, don't come. And I said, my dad is in the 80s, high 80s. I'm, I'm going to suggest it. Well, Monday, my mom called him and started pushing for him to come visit her. And my dad called me and said, I think you think it'd be okay if I swung by. And I was like, no, 
No, it's not. It's code yellow. No. If we don't know where the where the where people are being infected, how it's being circulated, then no, dad, no. You know, so right after the broadcast on Monday, I spent a lot of time saying, dad, no, no. Don't do it. What if I just run coffee? No. Okay. So I did not plan for my day to be the second half of trying to convince my father not to go in a zone that has already been infected with COVID-19. Okay. He's thinking, I want to see your mom. Your mom wants to see me just this once. Well, how many people said just this once? So finally my father said, okay, but it took some time. It took patience. It took stuff. That was the frying pan, Joe. And I know you were, you know, having a joke here. So it's, believe me, I love it. I love the joke. But in reality, you're talking very truth. You're talking truth here, Joe. So I want you to know that. Okay. My day was completely disrupted because my father was thinking of getting in the car and going to see my mother in a place that has told us there's COVID. It's one thing if you go to a place and all of a sudden someone who wasn't very thoughtful infected everybody with COVID and you go, great. You know, I didn't know, you know, but my dad, you don't walk in lion. There's a dragon in there who breathes fire. Well, I think I'll go visit that cave today. No. <sighs> they love each other. So, and I love them, but if you don't have early parents that you you've got to kind of talk talk with or take care of or support in some sort of way don't worry you will it will be coming it will happen and you have to be careful as a son or a daughter because they're your parents and a lot of times your parents will say you shouldn't speak to me like i'm your daughter cuz you're my daughter and so you have to watch how you speak to them because, you know, I should be telling you what to do, not you telling me what to do. And then I'll have to say, Dad, you know, I'm just watching out for you. I'm scared. Because you're, you know, 88. I'm scared. Please just call her on the phone and FaceTime with her. The facility has that. You know, we'll get to see her soon enough, but they got to get this under control. They don't know where the infection is exposed you know, they don't know the exposure areas. They're trying to figure that out. It really sucks. It really sucks. But when they ask you, they say, it's up to you. You know, masks are optional. But yet people are still getting sick because they're getting in these groups inside buildings without masks only to discover some yahoo who felt they had the right to go to the concert or to the event had covid and went and infected everybody so my choice is indoors wearing a mask and a high powered one because i have a high risk person and i don't want to not get to see my mom when they finally open it up my choice my choice i'm not telling you what to do OK, but I want you I will tell you one thing. Think about it. It's still out there just because you choose to ignore it doesn't mean it isn't out there and it won't get you. So so really think about it. You know, is a mask so bad? I personally think it's not a problem. I did have way too many in my car, but <laughs> it's because I don't want to forever forget it. So that's me. Darren says, I stand corrected. <laughs> no, no, you don't. It means the same. You understand that, right? You are absolutely right, Darren. Production assistant, personal assistant, same thing, PA. A production assistant is a person who wears many hats. You just got, you, you gave me the general, I was more specific. So believe me, it's just clarification, okay? I love you, man. You know that. Uh, Affogato Italian coffee with ice cream. Thank you, Diane. I love you. Uh, if I spelled it right, I have a head like a sieve. No, no, no. I, I, You did it so much better than I could have. Um, you, you really nailed it there because when it comes to spelling, I'm challenged. 
And that's just the way it is. I have to keep looking on how to spell Chapek, seriously, because I want to spell it C-H-E-P-E-K instead of C-H-A-P-E-K. I can't tell you how many times I've looked it up. So seriously, Diane, thank you so much for doing just what you did. I did not send you the 50th thesis, Darren, but it sounds cool. Uh, if it wasn't you, Darren, who sent me the cards? I thought you sent me the cards because there was tea in there. You sure it wasn't you? See what I mean? Just do not ask me to remember who sent what because it's getting to be so many things coming through. It is a problem to have with Terry's tribe, just so you know. It is a lovely problem to have that there's so many things coming that I can't remember who did what. So I'll, you know what I'm going to start doing? I'm going to have to say, okay, who sent this? <laughs> and who sent this? And who sent this? Okay, you know, that's what I'm going to have to start doing. I tried labeling, but for some reason that doesn't seem to be make it, doing it, Darren. I love your story too, says Diane. It makes uh, me tear up every time. So sweet and so special. Aw, Diane, it is, it, is, uh, it is truly the best world to live in when you take your time to find the person who was put on earth for you and vice versa. But you got to take your time in a world where instant gratification seems to be the mantra. You got to take your time. They need to be worthy of you. And that's on both sides. They need to be worthy of you. What is your criteria and what is theirs? And what are you willing to give? Okay. Can't be. If you want a servant, hire somebody, hire a maid. If you want someone to be the yin to your yang, the, the, the completion of your, of your circle of life, then you got to take time and, and check all applicants. Okay. In a world of swipe, which I totally do not understand. Uh, I don't know how you guys do it. I do not know how you do it. I am happy to be almost 65, so I don't have to worry about that. The love of my life is here, and uh, I'm glad I found him in time to really enjoy the time together. Grandma loves her cricket joy, she says. It does a lot. Oh, the joy is the little one, right? Right, Bella? That's the little one. So what can it do? Oh, we're going to have to talk later. You won't even be able to talk now. I will uh, message you and you can just, or just message me and tell me what you love about the Cricket Joy. Because I was looking at that, but I was wondering if it was too limited in what it did. Because a lot of people were saying, yeah, the Joy is fun, but it's not, it's too limited. But now you're saying you really like yours. So that's the kind of person, you're the person I want to talk to. Because that might be plenty for me. I don't know. I've never owned a cricket. I did a long time ago, but it wasn't as good as the ones now. She got the cricket cup press as well. Oh, yes, I've seen this. So you're making, yeah. Ooh, you're giving me ideas. I was nearly five when we, we met. I'm 11 July 31st. That's right. I can't keep track of you. You're growing up so fast, girl. You really are. You just you're just getting to be a big girl. And you were just I remember the day I met you. You know, I keep showing your picture here, even if you're not here. I show you a picture of us meeting at Disney Paris. It was just lovely. So, uh, but I'd like to see you again before you go into college. Just so you know, Bella, we got to get that meeting happen happening. So I want COVID to get out. All I drink in Japan is milk tea, says Joseph, and iced coffee. Japan is the greatest. I got to tell you, I, you know, there were those vending machines from the 50s where, you know, a vending machine for coffee, you pushed a button, the cup fell in the funnel. You remember the cup? Sometimes it, it didn't fall in right. And then the, the, the dispenser would do the coffee, the drip to a certain height. And then if you wanted cream, then they'd go and the cream would go in and the sugar would go in. And then it would say, ready, ready, ready. And you'd lift up the little window and you'd reach in and you'd grab your coffee. That's what I remember. But in Japan, uh, 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 it's already mixed in the bottle or the can and you push the button and the can goes in. You're like, ow, 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 like, like a soda, only it's milk tea. Yeah, Joseph, I I had never seen that before, and I got so excited, and my Japanese friends were laughing, but uh, but I loved it, and of course, the home of sushi. 
Uh, can't go wrong there. Uh, don't need to go to Japan to get milk tea hot in the can from a vending machine. Yes, you would need to go to Japan for that. But there are Japanese supermarkets in the USA, especially. Oh, yes. Trust me. And I have got one that I call Chinese Sears because it has got everything under the sun and it is awesome. It has some of the best uh, fish chips, which are one of my favorite because Americans don't really like fishy tasting things. And of course, I love it. So uh, those come from both China and Japan. Um, shrimp chips. Uh, what else did I get from Japan that I love? Oh, my teas come. A lot of my ginger tea, the one in the packet, this one here comes from um, comes from my Chinese ears. So it's really yummy. It's good. It's little uh, ginger particles, so really great for your immune system. And if you're someone like me who gets motion sick, ginger settles your stomach. So uh, so I love that tea. I mix it in with my other tea, and, and life is good. Life is really good. Uh, have you had boba tea, the bubble tea? Yeah, I don't like it. Um, with the tapioca balls at the bottom, the stuff is awesome. No, I don't like it. I don't like it. Ugh, ugh, don't like it. I will, don't think I'd mind the tapioca balls outside of the boba tea, but together for some reason, it just does not work for me. It's funny because I thought I would, cause I love tapioca and I love tea, but not in that structure. I've tried it so many different times. Maybe there's a place you know of, and I can try it again, but oh, so far, Joe, that is a no go. <laughs> Bubble tea is great to see. Joseph says he likes it. See, so you got a friend there uh, liking it. It just, uh, no, it doesn't do it for me. There used to be a Starbucks ice cream. There used to be a Starbucks ice cream, but they, but they sadly discontinued it. Three or four flavors, but they were all incredible. haagen makes a comparable coffee ice cream that is quite good and very creamy. Yes. In fact, we're, uh, have you guys seen this show? A lot of you love Disney Plus. Have you guys seen this show, The World According to... Um... <sighs> now I forgot his name. But anyway, Jeff Goldblum. The World According to Jeff Goldblum, which is a series on Disney Plus. Have you seen it? Look at the one about ice cream. Because I love ice cream, okay? It is an obsession with me. In fact, if you've seen... Uh, if you were early on my Instagram page, it was pictures of me eating all kinds of ice cream because I'm so obsessed with ice cream. Um, especially when you say it's homemade, home churned, home created. Oh, I got to try it. And then if it's coconut, coconut cream, creamy sort of vanilla ice cream with coconut in it, I'm happy. In fact, my husband for Christmas bought me an ice cream maker and all I do is make coconut. Now, my best friend was out and she loves chocolate and I made chocolate and she said the chocolate was so good. She wanted the ice cream maker and the recipe. So I made it myself. So um, now I can have my coconut ice cream anytime I want because I don't like coconut sorbets or sherbet. I want coconut ice cream. And I can get it all over the East Coast. And I did. And I just love it. I'm such a freak for it. But Jeff Goldblum talks about why ice cream and he talks to Ben and Jerry's and I've never liked Ben and Jerry's. I don't like giant chunks of stuff in my ice cream. No, I'm not into it. I want the balance. And the balance was always off for me, but there's a great interview there. And I think you guys ought to check it out. And it basically, I'll, I'll tell you a little bit about it. It basically talks about how Ben and Jerry's ice cream came to be was because one of them, uh, has lost part of their, their taste. And so Ben, Ben and Jerry together created ice cream that the one who had lost his 50% of his taste and smell could actually taste. Hence the giant chunks, which is why if you like Ben and Jerry's ice cream, you like it specifically because it's got these giant chunks of yumminess in it. Well, the yumminess happened because of a man who couldn't taste. He would keep one would keep adding, and I can't tell you which one it is. You'll have to find that yourself. One would keep adding the pieces in there until the other one who had lost 50% of taste and smell could actually taste and enjoy it. And I thought that was a cool story. I, I'm not a Ben and Jerry's fan, but I thought that was really a great way to understand how their company came to be. So check out that series. It's very fun. 
Um, ice cream rocks. I'm not going to say no. Surf, do you surf? Oh, no. I tried it one time. My sister surfs like a fiend. But I'm best if the board is on sand. <laughs> Your husband fixed my mechanical gut. Yes, he did, Mark. He did. Now, Mark Silverman, a voiceover person, he does voiceovers. And um, we found out that we are kindred spirits when it comes to 1950s uh, uh, horror movies, scary movies. He loves the, the Universal Monsters. He has a special love in his heart for a movie called War of the Gargantuas. And if you haven't seen it, Google it. You ought to see it because it's a lot of fun. But we also are Godzilla fans. So we're big Godzilla fans. And uh, uh, he had a mechanical Godzilla and Lindsay tinkered with it. And indeed, he fixed it for Mark. So Mark could have his little, he could have his mechanical Godzilla. So it's just interesting. Like I said before, unlikely people who like things that you don't think of. And then you find out that they like it. It's really cool. Yeah, I'm a movie nut. Love movies. Love them, love them, love them. Uh, let's see. Retirement in UK. Then we can ride steam trains together. Uh-oh. Now you're talking. And we'd have your favorite weather. Lots of rain. Grandma said too much rain. Yeah, I doubt that. However, my husband would say too much rain. See, this is the challenge. My husband does not like it cold. My, I think my husband doesn't like it hot either. But he'd love it if it was somewhere in the middle. Like his favorite temperature, I'd say, is 75 and mine is 60 or 59. 45 can be good at times. 30, 35 degrees is nice also. You see what I'm saying? So for him, he's not good with that really cold weather. So as long as he is alive, I told him I'd never make him move to someplace really, really cold. I'd, I'd make sure it was a, a climate that we could both deal with, which is why we're in Southern California. There are a couple of hot months, but a lot of times where we are, the weather is very nice. And we have a breeze, which always makes things better. Um, this weekend, it could be a blast furnace. We might see, we might be thinking that we're, you know, turning glass and making glass art because it's supposed to be a blast furnace of heat, which we hope not. But uh, usually it's not so bad. But we're not humidity people. So Texas and uh, Florida are out for us. We would not live there because the humidity is awful and we're not a fan of humidity. So anywhere we're super, super humid and yucky, we weren't, you won't find us there or even thinking about living there. We like the dry heat, but we can't have it really hot like Phoenix. Ugh. Um, so California is what we love. And so hopefully we can stay here because I won't tell you it's a economical state to live in because I would be lying. Um, but yeah. We agree with you 100%. If you, remember, if you remember at your Disney end event, Rose and I still follow the protocol and will for quite sign. Absolutely, Bob. Absolutely, you will and do. You are so right. I found a funny video of a baby eating ice cream that you'll love. I'll send it to you. Messenger later. I love that, Joe. You sent me another one that I thought was really cool, too. I can't remember. You do send me a couple. I don't really spend a lot of time watching videos, so I love when somebody sends me one so that I can... I can look at it and see how cute it was, you know. Um, the other day I was driving in my car. It's the one time I don't drive in my car a lot because uh, I work from home, thank God, with gas prices the way they are. But I have to tell you that it's the one time I really listen to the news is when I'm in my car. I listen to talk radio. And uh, the news is pretty grim, you know. Um, but... Uh, I heard about this little girl that was in Texas where the, the crazy uh, nut job um, lost evil person killed children. I don't know what possesses you to do that. All I can think of is he had some, you know, um, he had some mental health challenges and I'd like to think he didn't realize how, what he was doing, but he seemed to be pretty clear on it from what stories are coming out of there. But uh, I guess it was yesterday that, uh, or maybe the day before, where a little girl uh, was videotaped. She did not have to actually testify as they are going through, um, sifting through what 
what happened and how they can make things better and everything. But uh, her teacher told them they heard the pop, pop, pop of uh, or the whatever, the sound of the guns. And they asked what it was to their teacher. And the teacher said, why don't we lay down and pretend we're going to go to sleep? Well, this little girl um, saw the gunman come in and start to kill her friends. And she hid in the back and he left. And when she turned, and I'm not sure I have the whole story right, but the bottom of the back I do, she saw her friend had been shot and killed and she heard the gunman coming back. So think about this. She's 10 and she had to cover her body in her friend's blood and then play dead to save her life. No child should really have to go through this but people do go through devastating things. And this little girl thought, had the balance of mind and the strength to figure out a way to survive. And oh my goodness, when the father testified live, he was in tears as she is his middle child, one of five. And he said, the little girl that used to have the playful, joyful, joyful attitude used to joke with him and things isn't doing with him with that anymore. And he's saying in tears that he's got to work with her and help her get past this and put it in a compartment in her heart and in her soul that will serve her as best it can, but that she can go on and live her life. Because to me, I thought that is a survivor. You know, many people are, you know, do like, what would I do? I don't know what I would do. I don't know. I would think, and I'm an adult. I don't know that I would be that. What's the word? I don't think I could think that quick on my feet. I would like to think that I would. And this little girl is 10. And the father said through tears, I could have lost my child. You know? I mean, it just struck me so hard. And uh, um, people behaving that massacres are, massacres now are as common as ordering a cup of coffee. We can't have that happen, guys. We can't, we can't do that. You know, I don't know what we can do, but something's got to be done. And I'm always searching, you know, what can I do? How can I help? What can I do? And and in the tribe, we're just trying to gather as many people as we can to be positive with each other. That's one thing we can do is get to be get with other people and help people have a place to 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 get to feel better without getting so dr drastic, you know. And so um, it really affected me, and uh, I thought a lot about it because I thought, you know. This, this little girl must have sat there and thought, you know, this is a, I don't even know if she consciously said this is a crazy idea. She had to think on her feet. She had to think in seconds. The guy was coming back. She had proof he was going to kill every kid in the, in the area. So she did what she had to do. And I just am amazed at her. I was just amazed at her. Her, uh, you know, she probably thought of her parents. What can I do so my parents don't have to grieve? What can I do to live? You know, Whew. incredible, incredible, really incredible. Ben and Jerry's make some flavors without chunks and stuff, I believe. Yeah, they had one that I was able to deal with because the chunks were nuts inside and I love nuts. So it was something like butter pecan. So they just had, you know, lots of pecans and that was good. That was good. But it's not my favorite. In fact, um, 31 Flavors has... Uh, toasted coconut. And it used to be a seasonal flavor in August. And I used to buy five gallons and put it in my freezer out back and eat little bits of it, trying to make it last the entire year until 31 flavors released that flavor again. But now it's not seasonal anymore. It's there all the time. So anytime I go, I can get toasted coconut. And that is the closest I can get to commercial coconut on this side of the Mississippi. So I'm always looking for it, but now I can make it myself. Grandma said she got a lovely she got a lovely coconut ice cream when we saw you in Cherry. Yeah, we both did. We both did. But again, that's over there. 
for some reason, uh, east of the Mississippi, they make coconut ice cream. I went to Cotuit, which is near Cape Cod, which is in Boston, uh, in Massachusetts, not in Boston. <laughs> and they all have creamy coconut ice cream. And my favorite place, it was served by college students. And it was just the joint was jumping and you're eating your own coconut ice cream and you're watching the kids as they dance and they, they scoop the scoop. And it just feels really 1950s, 1960s, 1970s, 1980s, where kids are having a good time all together, wearing the little hats and singing while they're scooping the ice cream. It was the, it was the, it was the best. I loved it. I loved, loved, loved it. So, you know, the experiences are always special, right? They always make things more special. You should get a Ninja Creamy, Cremy. You can make your own ice cream and gelato. No, I have. I have one with Cuisinart. My husband bought it for me for Christmas and it has a motor in it. So I don't have to freeze the housing and I don't have to do this. I just push a button, pull the ice cream out, put it in and put it in the freezer and then eat it. <laughs> It tends to have more coconut. My husband says you really like to chew your ice cream because I just pile the coconut in and then, add, you know, the ingredients and then pop, 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 pop. I really am quite crazy when it comes to my coconut ice cream. Now that I can make it myself. <laughs> I'm crying for the little girl and the families. I'm tired of tragedies. Um, you know, Diane, so many people are like you, but then you really wonder about the people who love tragedies. You know, a lot of people say that the news and the news media love tragedies because if it bleeds, it leads, you know, and they need people to watch their channel. But I'd like to think that's not the case. Um, the news can often be bad and, and negative, but every once in a while, there's a great story of someone who's done something wonderful and special and kind and good or or, or risen above the ashes or, or, or done something heroic. So it's not all bad, but unfortunately we sometimes often have to cherry pick the good news. But um, yeah, the news can be tough and I don't listen to it all the time, but I try not to not listen to it, if that makes sense, because I need to know what's going on in our, in our world and I can easily sit here and listen to uh, Downton Abbey series over and over and over again. But then I'm kind of ignorant when it comes to what's happening out in the world. And so um, I listen to the news just every so often so that I'm not completely in the dark about what's happening in the world. Because mm -hmm. I think it's important. Um, not very political. And um, so Tuesday we had a vote in the primary and I was really frustrated because there was a lot to study and learn and it's a very important primary. And so I didn't just want to have someone else tell me how to vote. I wanted to kind of study the candidates and hear what they had to say. But it was interesting because when I was looking for things that a lot of the candidates had to say, I couldn't find some of them and that sort of bothered me. I think every candidate should be able to speak and I want to hear how they feel because there are some that are in office that I'm not loving right now. And uh, I'm grateful to all of them that they want to be in office because it's something I don't want to do. But I also want you to be someone who's not a little crazy, you know, like the guy who doesn't feel we should convict criminals, that fool. And that guy's a fool. I mean, have you seen on TV people breaking into like, for example, a jewelry store and they've got a calculator because this nut job has told them no reason to convict anybody who's done like under $950 worth of stuff. So what he's saying is you can go in and steal $949 worth and you won't be, you won't be prosecuted or even, or even reprimanded for what you did. So they're in there with calculators stealing every night, you know, $949 worth of stuff. Okay, let's go. See, people aren't stupid. People are smart. They want to steal. Now they found out they don't, they're not going to get brought up if they steal something. So now they're going in and stealing as long as it's under this dollar amount. Okay, what nut came up with that? We know what nut. And he needs to be out. 
So that's the kind of stuff that really bugs me is that kind of, I don't even know where that thinking comes from, but it's just makes me go, oh, what are you, what, you know, giving beachfront property to homeless people. Yeah, no. Okay. I feel for you if you're homeless, but you do not need prime real estate. You don't No. No, there's, the, you know, the coast is, the Gold Coast is the Gold Coast. And those people that want to buy beach houses are probably, that's all they've got is that view. Um, So for you to be homeless, making us feel like maybe we want to be homeless so we can get free beach from property? No. But there, California, last time I looked, was a big state. And let's give you a place. Let's help you to get better and learn and, and, and move forward. If you're someone who is homeless and wants to do that, many people who are homeless just like living off the radar and many aren't well. So we need to help each other in that respect. But California has got a lot of land and uh, there's some places that you could put housing up that would be great and access because we're all about access. We're a big we're a big state, so we have lots of accesses, ways to get around, ways to get to your job, ways to get to you know wherever you need to get to. So the whole state you can build in areas that you know not the beach. It's too too um, the beach is too lim um. What's the word? It's, it's, well, like prime, prime real estate is what I want to say, but not really. It, there's not, it, they're already crammed together. There's only so much coast is what I'm trying to say. So you don't need to put them there. You can put them inland where there's lots of room and lots of space and uh, um, just make sure they have access to stuff, you know, but not everybody wants access to stuff. Not everybody wants to be on the radar. You know, some people choose to be homeless because they like living their life without being a statistic, without being um, without being someone that is counted or sold to, or they a lot of them may not have a social security number or a driver's license. They just want to be under the radar. They want to live kind of, you know, and then there are those who just aren't sure because they're not you know, they're having some challenges in mental health or, or drug abuse or something. So there's all types of, of reasons for becoming homeless. And for those who are a victim of circumstance, they want to be helped and have that housing and have that leg up. And they're more than happy to fly on their own once they've got the, the release part. But sometimes you need a little extra help. And so those are the people that you want to really focus on, but you don't want to ignore the others. My opinion, if you disagree, you know, I get it, but this is, this is what I feel. You already have a nice, yes, I do, Joe. Uh, he gave it to me for Christmas. He said, I'm tired of you complaining about coconut ice cream. <laughs> I want you happy. <laughs> I have to go to bed. Okay, my darling, 740. All right. Night, night. Love you, Bella. Sweet dreams. Dream about ice cream. <laughs> Isn't she the sweetest? She's the best. That's why I love the tribe. Good people, good news. Exactly. Yes. And and we'll we'll discuss issues, but we'll do it, we'll do it in a how can we help way. You know, and sometimes it just takes being nice to your neighbor. You know? Just be so my neighbor across the street just had a brand new baby boy. And we, my whole neighborhood has been has been looking out the window, waiting for him to walk his little dog. He has a little, he has a little chihuahua named Nike. And we're waiting for him to walk to walk his dog because then we know baby born. So we haven't, you know, jumped in his house and stuff because it's our first baby. And then we're waiting. You know how first babies can be. Baby can be late. Baby can, you know, baby can take a long time to come out. Uh, you just never know. So we didn't want to bother him. We wanted him to be able to focus completely on his beautiful wife and uh, for her to be able to completely focus on giving birth, which, uh, you know, those of you who have kids and have gone through it, you know what I mean? So we waited and we waited. Well, yesterday he walked his dog and the neighborhood came out. Like I, we, I rolled down the window. I was actually driving home and I said, baby, because he wasn't going to tell us the sex of the baby. So brand new baby boy named Nico. And three weeks, it's been three weeks. And he said there were some challenges for him and his wife, but they're getting their stride. 
he looked a little tired, probably didn't get a lot of sleep as a new father, but it was great to share with him this celebration. So I think most of some will run over and, 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 and talk to the wife and congratulate them and all that kind of stuff. I'm going to wait another week or so. I'm probably going to wait till I get back for my birthday. And then I'm going to send them over a little gift. Um, I just want to make sure that they have time to acclimate to their new lifestyle. And a new baby does just that. He's got two fur babies. I'm sure they're trying to acclimate while the dad's trying to acclimate while the mom's trying to, you know, you know what it is with having a first child and it's joyful and it's a workout all at the same time. So I'm super excited for them, but that's what I'm talking about. We just, we just shower the, woohoo, you know, just celebrate where you can celebrate, be kind and be, just start with your neighbors, make sure you have a happy neighborhood. And if there's someone who's extra quiet or someone who seems a little pensive or elusive, or you see something that's not cool, then say something, start with your neighbors, just kindly, just nicely and, um, and go from there. Yeah. Baby steps, as so many say. Who is giving beachfront property to homeless people here in California? Yeah, it was it was a uh, it was a suggestion. Yes, and I think he was trying to get it passed. I can't remember his name. My my husband knows it by heart because he just does not like this character. But uh, but uh, yeah, there was a patch. I can't even believe. See, here's the thing, Joe. There was a small patch of beachfront property that didn't have a house on it. Now I drive up and down the coast here in Southern California. I don't know where they were talking about because most of them have houses and they are a pretty penny. Let me tell you for something that looks uh, sometimes a little bigger than a pigeon coop. But um, apparently there was this area and they were thinking of giving it. He suggested giving it to the homeless. Well, you can bet that those people who pay that extra money weren't very happy about that. And they were called all sorts of names by the advocates for homeless people. They were called all kinds of names because they wanted to, they didn't think this was fair. Neither did I. There are so many places that you can build for the homeless and it does not have to be in crowded, crowded areas. If homeless people liked super crowded areas, you know, they, 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 they're vagabonds. They're, they're living where they can before they're chased out. It can't be a life that they love. So it's either someone who chooses to live under the radar, someone who's having some challenges with illnesses, mental illness or drug abuse or something. And they, they, they just aren't completely, you know, they, they, they need help. And then the person who is a victim of circumstance. And we have a lot of those people who are being moved out, the inflation is getting so crazy that they cannot afford housing. Those are the people that need housing. A mother and her kids, a, a, a couple, a, a, a single person who's just trying to make it happen needs some help. You know, they're saying you are pricing me out of the market. This is crazy. And so what needs to happen for those people is to get a handle on the market and, and get it so people can live, my thinking, or provide an area where they can and, and, and get that leg up because those people want help. I remember that there was a, a news report where the person went along Venice Beach and interviewed people who were homeless there. And they asked each person, you know, if, if we offered you housing and a chance to, you know, get back on track, would you do it? And the guy was like, I'd love it. You know, I'd love it. I, I a place that's safe, a place that, 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 that has running water where, where I can feel human again. I would love it. He said, you know, I would love it. But then they interviewed someone else who said, no, no, I don't want the evil government to have their eye on me. You know, so you've got people that have, they're all from all different camps is all I'm saying. You can't put all, you can't put anybody in one basket. We can't do that with, with anybody, any human being. We're all so different. So why would you think you could do it with homeless people? It has to be several um, tiers or situations. And I don't have the answer. You know, but I do know that there's that that you can't have the same band aid solution for everybody. It's it's going to have to be case by case, and that takes work. Yeah, that takes work. 
Nobody is in their right mind chooses to be homeless. No, but there are people, Joe, who choose to be off the radar. Now, follow with me here. You cannot be in an apartment and be off the radar, right? You cannot um, own a home or really drive a car being off the radar. There are certain rules and criterias that fall into place. So if you want to be completely off the radar, you're, you're choosing where you're living, you're camping. You know, he, I think what you're saying here is choose to be homeless. They may be saying, I'm not homeless. I'm not homeless. I'm fine. I'm not being tracked. I'm not being monitored. I'm not being studied. There's a lot of people like that who choose not to be in what we consider a home and will defy you and say they're not homeless. You see what I'm saying? There are, they're out there. In fact, there was a guy um, that they uh, was living. It, we have the LA River, which is cement, and then it has a little bit of water in the middle unless we get a fluke. Whenever we have a fluke, we have to pull people who have been living. There's a little, um, like, there's a little sort of sandbar type island where trees are growing inside the LA River because we have so little rain. And there were people living on that little island area. They were living there, you know people who chose to live there, whether they were homeless, this was a nice place to live, running water, you know, going past you, all kinds of cool stuff. Well, they decided that um, a lot of people said, you know, this was dangerous and could be, you know, disease ridden and they were worried. So uh, they came and they, they, they cleared the people, they cleared it out and they gave people homes and stuff. Well, one of the police officers was walking across like a, a, a little bit of a hill. And when he stepped on something that the dirt went boof, and he stepped on it again and the dirt went boof. And he realized there was a metal plate underneath where he stepped. So he dusted it off and he pulled it back. And there was a, 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 a manhole, kind of manhole thing. And he jumped in and he went in and there was a bunker inside. And a little apartment that this person had made off the radar. And in the storm drain, he had a thousand bicycles. So he not only living off the radar, living unseen, living just fine. But his business was stolen bicycle business that he would resell to people. Had no intention of them giving him housing. None whatsoever. He was fine. He had what he wanted. Selling the bicycles in person for cash. Uh, stealing them, selling them. And living in this bunker that no one knew about. Just by chance, the police officer stepped on the middle plate and it went boom. Yeah, the dirt bounced up. So that's what I'm talking about. You cannot put everything in the same jar. Different different places for different people as different as we are. Jenna, Jenna, have nice dreams. Yes, I hope she heard that and saw that, Bob. And Bob says, Jenna, Jenna, awesome. So guys, we went a little over two hours simply because I got into some heavy stuff at the end. This happens sometimes because, uh, you know, when you want to do, when you want to help, you, you're constantly thinking, how can I make it better? How can I be more of a service to my community? Um, how can I benefit my community? How can I be part of the solution, not the problem? And that's why I think near the end when the flow, you know, when we're talking about a lot of the positive things, um, that we talk about some negative things and then say it might be good to take a moment and think of how we can, what we can do to help. But I think that that's one of the things about Tuesday that made me think not everybody who doesn't live in an apartment or place is homeless and they're very happy right where they are doing right what they're doing because they don't like the government to tell them what to do. They don't like anyone telling them what to do and they're fine living in a quiet spot where no one can find them most of the time and, uh, and figure in a way to scratch a living and, and do it unnoticed. And this guy had a whole business. He had over a thousand bicycles hidden in the storm drain and he was selling them um, to people, you know, he was probably cleaning them up in some, and, you know, steal it, clean it up, change it, you know, chop shop for bikes or whatever. I don't know how he was doing, but he was doing it. And he was doing it very successfully and he was completely off the radar. He had no driver's license, no ID, no social security, nothing. He was Mr. Nobody. 
And a lot of, there are people out there that like that means a lot to them to be that, that off the radar in the middle of nowhere kind of a person. Yeah. You may know a couple. I know one. Yeah. He lives up in the mountains, lives in the mountains, no ID, no nothing. Shed all of that lives up in the mountains in a little cabin way up. Um, and, uh, happy, very happy on their own. Yep. Yep. So it's, it's real. It's real, baby. Um, not me, but you know, so you can't just, just can't assume about people. Ask, talk as best you can. Yeah. And many are doing that. Criminals who choose to live off the radar aren't homeless. Um, they're criminals laying low deliberately. It's an unfair and generally homeless people to lump such people in with the homeless. Exactly. And then look at this guy who steals, which makes him a criminal. But he's not necessarily laying low so he doesn't get caught. You know what I mean, Joe? <laughs> he decided that this was a business he could go undetected. In the middle of the night, steals a bike goes into the hills, waits until nobody's looking, which is pretty easy because he's in the middle of nowhere, raises up the secret door, climbs down into the heart of the earth, locks the secret door for the most part. I don't, you know, you know, generates his lights by creating his own power by pedaling a bicycle, generating his own power. We've seen it. Cleans up the bike. Changes the paint job, goes out, walks around, stands. It's for sale. 20 bucks. Person says, thank you. Back into his Larry goes. I think it would be better if he was creating art out of found objects around his area. But hey, he figured out on how to do it this way. Is it a good way? No, it's not a good way. He doesn't feel it hurts anybody, though. He didn't think it hurt it. It hurt anybody. I'm sure the guy who lost the bike thought it hurt him or her pretty bad, but he didn't think so. And then he resold it, and so he wasn't laying low. He was living this life off the radar. I'm telling you, Joe, they are out there. They are out there. I have a friend or two. Who's doing just that off the radar? Doesn't want, doesn't want to pay taxes, which makes, <laughs> is that a criminal? Um, doesn't want to pay taxes. Doesn't want to be a part of society. Wants to be left alone. So they have no social security, no kind of ID whatsoever, no vehicle, So that is not a homeless person. You're absolutely correct. That person has chosen their life and that's what they want, which is why, just as you say, you can't bundle people all together like that. And that's what a lot of the politicians are doing. They're, they're bundling everyone together. They're trying to, to, to make it the homeless crisis. Not everybody is in crisis. I know you're speaking general, but the, you got to know that specific little, little, buckets that things are in so you can better serve these people. Because why build a giant apartment building if the people don't want to come? And don't build it to where they're not safe. They need to be safe. They need to feel safe. So yeah, we could go on this forever, Joe. We really could. Everybody, thank you for joining me. Do something nice for someone else. You won't believe how much better you feel when you do it. And it's something as simple as buying someone a cup of coffee or just saying hello and sympathizing with what's happening. Next time you see a check checker struggling because people are angry, say something kind to of them. Make a joke. Make them laugh. That you're going to feel good and they're going to feel good too. Okay? Just look for ways to help. All right? Okay. I love you guys. Have a lovely weekend. We will see you on Monday. Hugs and loves, everybody. Be well. Have a good weekend.